Okay, traders, welcome to this week's live analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Um, hopefully you can hear me and you can see my screen. You should see a tick mill welcome screen. If you type a Y in the chat box and I'll know we are ready to go. Let me just get rid of some of these audio feeds. Okay. So, uh, once again, welcome. Um, just a quick bit of housekeeping before we get going here. As, uh, as I go through the charts and, and talk through the, the analysis, if you have any questions, um, please make a note of those. And at the end of today's session, I will open up a, a brief Q&A and cover off any questions you've got with respect to any of the charts. Or if you've got a chart you'd like me to take a look at that I haven't covered, I'm happy to do that also. Uh, so. Moving on quickly, disclaimer, um, very important, sp sp uh, specifically for today's content, uh, the views expressed here by me today are solely mine. They're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Uh, for those that are here for the first time today, uh, a brief introduction to myself. My name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. And after a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling the S&P 500. After some beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down and, uh, and basically give back all my gains and ultimately experience a si significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. So this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I had to really stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years. It was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a strategy that suits my personality. I extensively back and forward tested this strategy and developed a rigorous risk management approach to underpin it. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift that occurred was I moved from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to being a purely process-orientated individual. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've been managing investor capital through my managed account service. The performance data, as you can see on the screen, is, uh, is for that service. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentations on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also resident market expert for Tickmill, providing daily analysis in the form of my daily market outlook and a daily trade setup that I'm tracking in the markets. You can actually access uh, these through the Tickmill blog, or you can sign up through the blog to have them delivered by email directly to your inbox. 
My other, uh, I guess, passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand, fxcareerswap.com. We offer traders not just the uh, market, develop market development and understanding, but we also offer funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, uh, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in you having the opportunity to manage the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And for those that are interested, um, you can see on the screen there, there's a number you can call the trading desk in London, or you can drop an email to them and they will provide further information about what it is we are doing at FX Career Swap. Okay, so let's move into the charts. And this week, um, before I move into the, uh, the actual chart analysis, I wanted to just uh, briefly walk you through um, this new uh, series that we're doing at Tickmill uh, with a uh, daily Elliott Wave analysis um, on the intraday timeframes, predominantly on the four hour timeframe. And I just wanted to talk through what some of the, uh, the chart annotations mean so that you can understand um, the concept behind what we're doing and also how you can uh, implement the, uh, the information into your own trading. So for example, we have um, today's analysis here. This was on the Euro dollar, the four hour time frame, And I'd highlighted uh, the potential that we completed a wave three high on the daily time frame. So these, uh, these numbers here are annotating what I believe to be the, uh, the higher time frame, the daily time frame wave structure that we're currently in. So if we're in a wave three, if we completed or potentially completed a wave three high, what we're anticipating is some corrective price action that will ultimately lead to a wave four low being put in place. And then what we're looking to do is trade with the trend and, uh, and trade looking for a wave five upside objective. So once we've got this wave three high in place, we then have the first leg of correction, which um, subdivided into three, uh, three waves. So, so we had an ABC pattern. We then completed another ABC, which gave us a, uh, an, a potential WXY pattern in play. And once we completed that high uh, here, the X wave high, what, what I'm ultimately looking for then was another three wave correction to the downside into what I refer to as the equality objective. Now the equality objective um, is measured using the trend base uh, FIB extension tool and simply what I'm looking for is once we have this swing high in place, it's either going to be a B or an X wave high, then I'm looking for the market to test an equality objective versus either the, um, the W leg or the A leg if it's an ABC correction. And so that gives us a level to watch. And for, um, for, this, for the purposes of this chart, it was this 118.45. Forty-five. So that's denoted here with the green arrow, which shows you where I perceive uh, or what I perceive the, the dominant trend to be in the market. Down below here, we have um, the one six one extension of the um, of the X to Y leg or the B to C leg, and this one six one extension gives a level here of one fifteen ninety eight which I refer to as the, uh, the PRZ. And what does this mean? Well, PRZ means um, potential reversal zone. And uh, what, that, what the, that information that gives us is that if the market trades through um, the equality objective and ultimately then breaks the, uh, the PRZ, the potential reversal zone, that suggests that the current trend may be coming to a conclusion and we could be moving into a new, uh, a new phase of market development and a new trend. So the useful, um, th why this is useful is that it gives us a point of invalidation for the, um, for the current thesis. So at the moment, my, my, my bias in terms of looking at the market and where I see the overall trend structure is to the upside, but if we, if price exceeds the PRZ, then I will, um, I will then know that there is the potential that the trend has changed and we could be looking at a, either an extended correction or a new trend um, in the opposite direction, in this case, uh, to the downside. Now, once we tested, well, again, just in terms of um, trading information, um, some traders will actually uh, 
enter positions at the strike of the equality level. Some traders will watch for price action to develop here to suggest that um, the buyers are, 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 in, are in agreement with these levels. And if we see buying come into the market with bullish reversal patterns, then we can set long positions. Um, other traders will use the, uh, the actual whole zone here and subdivide it. And you can do this by using uh, the FIB retracement tool. So if this is where we anticipate, uh, or if this is our reversal zone, so what you can look to do is you could enter an initial position at the 118.45, and then add another position at the 50% of, the, um, of this zone that we've highlighted, the reversal zone or the action area. So the next entry will be at 117.22, and then you would use a stop just below the PRZ because we know that if we trade through the PRZ, that it, there's a high probability that the trend has changed and the market is moving into a new phase. So these, this is, that, those are a couple of ways of, um, of using this information to, um, to enter positions, to align yourself with the broader trend. The other way of using um, the, these levels is once we get a reaction from the level, then we can start to think about the new structure that should be developing. So if we have a C or a wave four low in place, then what we could reasonably expect is that the market will put in a new impulse leg, which should be a one, two, three, four, five wave extension. And so one of the, um, the, one of the high, probability, high probability entry levels is using the wave two pullback to enter long positions. So you want to be able to identify a five wave structure, which we can here, even on this, uh, this four hour chart, because we can subdivide, you could, or you can see here, we could uh, easily see a one, two, three, four, and five. So what we'd reasonably expect versus that, uh, that structure there is that we would trade back into the 50 to 61% retracement zone to suggest that the wave two low is in place, and then we would extend higher um, looking for wave three. Now, in this instance today, what I suggested in the video, uh, in the video analysis was that if we, could get, if we could break through the wave one high, I would be using that as confirmation that we had a wave two, a potential wave two in place, and prices should extend higher. In the video, I also said that if we don't get through that, uh, that 119.90 area, then the invalidation level for this for the, for the for this thesis suggesting that this would be a wave too low would be a breach of that wave too low at this 11880 now you can see prices came just shy of breaking that high and we're now getting a deep pullback here could hold this um, trend line uh, and have a very deep retracement here hold trend line support and still move higher but if we take out the 118 80 uh, support level, then we need to think that we are going to exceed this current C wave low, and we probably get a test somewhere into the 117.50 area, and then we reassess to see if we're going to put in a, uh, a new impulse leg to the upside. But like I say, the important level to factor here, and the one that you can really lean against, is this uh, is the PRZ level, and currently that comes in around 116 for the euro. I've had a, posted a couple of other charts. The dollar yen here, dollar yen has traded into uh, or exceeded its um, equality objective. And what I suggested here with the dollar yen was that we had an ABC correction into this uh, into this zone, and that it was subdividing into two five wave patterns. And um, and without uh, getting a, a, a what I was looking for in terms of a uh, opportunity to fade this move was a fifth wave completion which verse, if this is our way for low here at 108.32, uh, using an equality measure of wave one from the wave four low, that suggests we should at least test 109.89. And I was watching for bearish reversal patterns there. Also looking at momentum, we want to make sure we've got momentum divergence, using that as an extra confirmation uh, of a potential um, completion of this, this uh, fifth wave into the bigger uh, wave C objective on the higher time frame, and then looking for a pullback. So we'll see how this one plays out. We're still potentially in wave four here. So I'm, I'm looking for a 109.89 test, and then I'm looking for bearish reversal patterns and or 
<laughs> sorry. And I also want to see um, this momentum divergence still in place to um, to give extra to give extra confirmation uh, to the trade. Again, the alternative would be using the uh, using the level strike. So you would have entered one position at 108.53, another at 109.65, and then you'd use a stop just above the PRZ at around 110.80 if that was how you decided to uh, to play the trade. Um, one, we'll look at one other one because I did post this earlier in the week, the Swissy. So I'm lo I was looking for an equality objective versus this wave B high. Wave B high is still valid. We haven't exceeded it. We're seeing a bit of a, a reaction here at the moment higher, but um, looking for 91.85. So that was the ABC. We also had, and I referred to this last week, uh, symmetry swing support. When I refer to symmetry swings, what I'm talking about is this wave, um, wave two swing here overlaid against this high. And I'll just show you using the bar pattern tool here so you can see exactly what it is I mean. I use the trend-based um, fib extension tool to, uh, to do the measure measurements myself, but you can see here that uh, that would bring us down into this um, 92 level and uh, we've come just shy at the moment. So I've used these, these tools to build confluence. We've also got the um, fib retracement of the potential wave three here at 38.2% uh, retracement. Often that's where a wave, uh, a wave four will, uh, will develop at, uh, at 91.83. So you can see we've got a cluster of support here, 92 to 91.85 and watch for bullish reversal patterns there. And again, we've got a PRZ here at 90.98 and ultimately looking for prices to trade higher into a wave five objective. So hopefully that's, that gives you some additional information uh, on how you can use these Elliott Wave charts that I'm going to be posting. Um, they're mainly going to be posted on, on Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays, and hopefully you'll be able to track and see how, uh, how the price structure and wave structures uh, develop. So that said, let's, uh, let's jump into today's charts. I'll give me one second, guys. <coughs> Um, okay, so we're going to start here with the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has been the, um, the relative underperformer of the equity indexes. And one of the main drivers behind this has been the idea that um, tech stocks did really well uh, during the pandemic and as in the last stage of the pandemic on the basis that everybody was working from home and we were consuming and using more technology. Uh, we're all very familiar now with uh, with the dreaded Zoom calls, but um, now that we're, we appear to be coming out of this of the pandemic, and uh, certainly in the US, the vaccine program is is proving to be rapidly deployed and extensive and well received, and we have that huge stimulus in the US. Then markets are now with the view that um, that you know we're coming out of this this lockdown scenario and, um, and we're going to revert to, you know, going out to restaurants and bars, go, meeting people in person, business travel, etc. This is why we're seeing this relative underperformance um, from the NASDAQ. We saw a three wave decline last week uh, that came just shy of our equality objective. So what we were, what we were anticipating was if this was A, B, C, um, uh, sorry, AB, our C target was 12,094. We came just shy of there before, uh, before seeing this pullback. But the pullback has moved straight into the 50 to 61.8% retracement of the decline. And you can see by these tails on this day, on the daily time frame here, we've got some supply in the market and certainly um, seeing a potential here for a bearish outside reversal pattern. We close uh, through yesterday's lows here, then I'm looking certainly for a test of this uh, weekly range support down to 12,490. Now from here, buyers could step in and we could get a, another corrective leg here, which would set up an ABC to the upside, giving us 13,590 as the, as the target for the correction to complete. But if buyers don't step in in this zone, then I think we extend lower and we target a move down to test trendline support at the 17, uh, sorry, 11,700 level. So 
see, we, obviously today's close is going to be pivotal. If we close um, below yesterday's lows, that will put in an outside reversal candle, setting up certainly a test of weekly range support. If we don't find buyers here at the weekly range support, then watch for monthly range support and trend line support as the next downside tests. Similarly, in the S&P 500, uh, it's interesting to note, and I highlighted this to the guys uh, in the FX uh, career swap trading team, that um, at the beginning of last month, we had a big bullish outside reversal candle and traded higher into uh, the Fed meeting, which was, uh, which, which game was um, middle of the month last month. And from there, we sold off. This month, at the beginning of the month, we had a big bullish reversal. We've traded higher right into the Fed meeting and we're starting to roll over here today. It's gonna to be interesting to watch because this could, we could be looking at a, another leg um, to the downside, certainly to get a test of the monthly pivot in terms of the S&P 500 here. And again, note, and this is something you really want to always be paying attention to as we make new highs, are, the, are our momentum studies confirming the highs? Because if they're not, that's setting up divergence. And what divergence generally portends a correction or even a reversal in the market. So. S&P important to watch a close today below 39.37 would be bearish, certainly setting up a test of 38.68. Now let's move to the dollar index. The dollar, <clears throat> so with the Fed last night, um, the Fed came out and, uh, and were uh, adamant that they would remain accommodative to markets uh, through to uh, at least to the end of 2023 into 2020. Four, where we potentially see a rate hike. That led to some weakness in the dollar, but we've seen prices recover um, this morning on the basis, and we'll look at the chart in a minute, the 10-year yield has traded higher. And so whilst we find support at the, these prior lows here at uh, the 1172 area, there's the potential that we trade back up into the top side of this channel at 1187. We'd need, really need to see a loss of those, um, of those prior lows to set up a move down into the monthly pivot at 11.68. So for now, as we hold lows at the moment, we could see the dollar trade higher here into the top side of the channel again. The broader dollar index, uh, this dollar index versus uh, six currencies, set, whilst we hold lows at the moment, then uh, there's the potential that we trade back into these highs at 92.50. At this stage, we'd really need to trade um, through 93.50 to, uh, to, see how, to, to suggest we have a more meaningful low in place for the dollar here. At the moment, whilst we hold below this 92.50, and I still think we can see uh, further downside consolidation in the dollar index. And this is the chart really that's driving most of this price action. And this is the 10 year yield. And we're trading right into now uh, potential resistance here at the 175 level. And if we, uh, if buyers step in here, we could, oh, sorry, sellers step in here, buyers of the bonds, sellers of yields, um, then we could see this trend channel support get tested. But um, at the moment we are, uh, are pushing higher. And this is the market basically saying to the Fed that they don't buy this idea that um, rates aren't gonna be raised until 2024, um, that uh, we're gonna see in cost, but at least uh, cost push inflation based upon um, the, uh, the stimulus that we're seeing in the US and how that's going to impact uh, prices and inflation. So uh, watching this level, the 175 level in terms of yields here, uh, if we break through there, then uh, we should be testing 190 pretty quickly. Gold, <coughs> gold being weighed on, uh, obviously, as we see, uh, as we see the dollar ex uh, extending here a bit. Now, I suggested that um, in last week's session that we would trade up into this 1750 area, 1760, and we could potentially see some weakness here and ultimately price extended down because we've got a downside target here of uh, 1653, which is the equality objective versus this A, B, C wave low here. So I'm watching uh, for a test here of 1653. And again, a bearish reversal pattern potentially developing here in gold. We need to see where we close tonight. But if we close at or uh, below current levels, then that would be an outside reversal pattern setting up this test of this uh, 1653. Now, this is going to be a very interesting area. If we can get bullish reversal patterns here, then I'd certainly be looking at long positions in gold, possibly looking for a test of, uh, of 1800. Uh, to the upside. Crude oil. <clears throat> so 
Seeing some weakness here in crude, what this is going to be a very interesting level. This 61, uh, 61 dollars a barrel level would be the third test of this internal trend line support. And if we can uh, get down here and find support, we've also got weekly range support 61.56. Bullish reversal patterns here to set long positions. Ultimately, looking for a test of 71.75 in terms of uh, in terms of crude. Bitcoin. <laughs> traded to new highs, but you can see we have triple divergence now. We're seeing a bit of weakness um, in Bitcoin. We could easily now get a uh, an equality move in terms of a uh, the last correction lower. So we could see Bitcoin correct back into uh, this forty eight thousand level before trying to base again to challenge the target here of seventy thousand um, to the upside. So uh, pay attention again to this divergence. It's uh, it certainly weighed on prices uh, post last weekend. The dollar yuan is, uh, is correcting higher here now. So we could have a meaningful low in place in terms of this dollar yuan. And this is based on that weekly chart and the weekly support coming in at that 640 level. So if we can hold, uh, if we can hold current prices and trade higher, I'm looking for the next test here or the next upside objective being uh, 656 in terms of dollar yuan. Dollar yen, looking for a move through uh, 109.85 and a test then of this uh, weekly range resistance, 110.15. I think from there, we should uh, we could see the potential for a pullback in terms of uh, dollar yen and certainly back into uh, 108 would be a, an objective for me. Again, watching for bearish reversal patterns here uh, to set uh, short, short positions. Dollar Swiss. Um, Big bullish reversal potentially coming in here. And if we get that, then we can think that maybe the way for low is in place now for the dollar Swiss and we would be looking higher. We could be uh, making a move here to 94.50. So again, we'll be watching that close tonight. We've got the RSI stochastic back down below 20, reloading in terms of momentum to the upside. Euro we've just talked about, um, had that bullish reversal yesterday. Uh, eclipsing these, the range of the prior three days looked good, but uh, we come in weak here this morning. I have to see where we close tonight, but um, certainly if we've got to close back down through that 118.80, then uh, 117.50 and even 117.20, the yearly pivots would be the next objectives on the downside if that's, uh, if that's where we're going. Euro yen, I'm watching this, uh, we've tested up into uh, this 161, this 130, 35 area, top of the channel. And, uh, and this is starting to look like we might be rolling over here. We've got some uh, momentum divergence. So for me, again, watching for a close back through uh, 129.60s would be a shorting opportunity, certainly looking for 128.22 and the channel support. Euro Aussie was one we were talking about last week, and uh, it's betwixt and between really in terms of the equity indexes. Uh, it trades almost as a proxy, and um, and we've seen when we see equity strength, we tend to see weakness in the Euro Aussie. But when we see equity weakness, we tend to see strength in the Euro uh, strength in the Euro Aussie, and that's what we're currently seeing at the moment. The potential that we've got a double bottom in play here. And uh, we might be trading higher again in terms of the Euro Aussie. So need to see where we close. And again, pay attention to the S&P and the NASDAQ and where they close with respect to the next phase for the Euro Aussie. <coughs> Sterling, look bullish this morning, but we've uh, we pulled back here now. And so whilst we hold um, resistance at this 140 level, watch for a test of this Ascending trend line support. We've also got weekly range support, and we have these prior highs over here, the breakout point 137.50. Any move into that 137.50 area with bullish reversal patterns, I think it's a great opportunity on the long side in terms of sterling. Um, so we'll just have to see how we trade uh, or how the market responds when we get into this area. Sterling yen. This is one I'm watching on the short side. I've had. Uh, been looking at this this morning. I've, you can see we've got some nice momentum divergence. We're trading into resistance here. And what I'm looking for now is a close below yesterday's lows to, uh, to confirm that we have a potential high in place. And certainly then what we could see is uh, thinking in terms of symmetry swing support. So we could get a move back down into 148.75. 
And still then we'd be thinking in terms of that being a wave four low and another leg higher for a wave five. But certainly I think uh, wave three could be coming to conclusion here with all the divergence we're getting on these momentum studies. So uh, watch for a price confirmation there. The Aussie, again, looked, uh, looked bullish this morning, but we're seeing this roll over in line with the equity indexes and, um, and a move back through 76.99 would, uh, would suggest a head and shoulders pattern. And we could be back uh, looking at 75, uh, 76 level pretty quickly. But again, all important with these daily candles is waiting for, see where they close and get a lot of intraday noise that can be confusing. So best to pay attention to the closes. The Aussie yen also of interest because we can clearly see the potential here for a, uh, I'll just draw this in for you, for a nice five wave pattern to have completed. Three, four, and this is our fifth wave here. And wave five comes with some nice divergence on our momentum study. It's RSI stochastic rolling over with momentum. So again, watching for bearish reversal patterns here in terms of this Aussie yen. And I certainly think we can get a test of trend line support back down to the 81.35. So this is one I'm really going to be watching over the coming sessions, especially if these equity markets start to see some weakness. The Aussie yen trades <coughs> in a, in a heavy, uh, as a heavy proxy for equity risk markets. So I um, really want to, to pay attention to that, uh, to this Aussie yen. I think that's, if you don't have the ability to trade the equity markets, then certainly you can use the Aussie yen as a proxy. And the pattern looks really nice and clear here in terms of the Aussie yen. Kiwi, similar story to the Aussie really um, being rejected from the underside um, of the trend line. The trend line that was prior support now acting as resistance. And, uh, and we could be in for a bit more weakness here and certainly getting a retest of 71 level. Uh, Kiwi yen, similar story to the, the Aussie yen. It, uh, it really acts as a risk proxy. And you can see actually, we've got a nice double top here in terms of the Kiwi yen. And certainly if we get a close back through the 78 handle, then I think we retest interim uh, trend channel support and monthly pivot 77 level. But ultimately I'd be looking for a move to test the uh, the trend line support here. So again, these double tops or these wave five highs, it's really important to make sure that we've got this nice momentum divergence in place to add an additional level of confirmation to the trade. So that's, uh, those are the pairs that I'm watching. Uh, pay attention to these equity markets tonight and tomorrow. Uh, look, if, if we start to see weak closes, then certainly want to pay attention to the Aussie yen and the Kiwi yen as, um, as great proxies for those risk markets and, uh, and a nice way to trade them using uh, using the FX pairs. Okay, are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, if you type an N in the chat box, that's just as helpful as that. I know we, uh, we're all on the same page and I've, uh, I've done a decent job of explaining, explaining these charts to you. Uh, Vyas. Let's see. Um, hi, Vyas. Do you have a microphone? Uh, hello, Patrick. Can you hear me? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, again. Great stuff. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good, Patrick. Thank you. How are you? Are you all good? Very good indeed. Very good indeed. How can I help? Uh, so, um, I just wanted to ask you, I had the... A, a little question uh, from the course of the FX Career Shop. Sure. Um, when we're saying that in the Elliott wave th theory, a low must be formed, um, in what time frame must this um, point be low? In the last 10 days? In the last eight days? So, How do we... So it, it, what time frame are you actually trading on? It's is, is important, first of all. Um, most common in uh, the hour and the four hour. Okay, so what you want to do is when you're thinking about a low being in place, you want to pay attention to a couple of things. One, you want to stick to your trading time frame. Okay, so if you're if, if as I'm as I'm uh, doing this work, I'm taught, I'm working on the four hour time frame. So if I'm if I'm if my anticipation is that we're going to see a wave too low in play, then 
more often than not, what I'm what I'm looking for are a couple of things. One, I want to. Uh, it, it's great to see divergence. So as we get down here into this wave two low, you can see we've got loads of divergence in terms of the momentum study. Yeah. 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 Then we get this big bullish reaction, and what we've got prior to that bullish reaction is what I could clearly term as a wave. If, if this is one, two, three, four and I believe this is five to complete wave two, then I'm, ideally what I want to see is that wave four high exceeded. Okay. So I've got the momentum between this low and that low, which is one, one nice and easy way, a nice and easy visual to suggest that we could have a low in place. We've got a big bullish outside reversal candle here. Yeah? Yeah. And then we exceed this prior high. So once, once we've done that, from a balance of probabilities perspective, I can think to myself, we've probably got a wave too low in place there. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And also, it does. additional tools as well. If we think about the, uh, the VWAP, uh, you can also look for, it has the VWAP flip green, it has here. And then when we, when we clip this prior high, the higher time frame VWAP also turns green. Okay. So that's again suggesting we have upside momentum. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thanks very much, Patrick. Good stuff. Thanks for the question, Bias. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. If there aren't any other questions, I'll uh, I'll wrap this one up here. Like I say, the Elliott Wave updates will be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and uh, I hope you follow along with those. I hope you find them useful. And, um, and we will reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much and, uh, and have a great weekend, everyone.